right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike O'Geeky Podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game. I'm your host, Mike O'Geeky, and we got a great show for you guys tonight. Tierra Mycology. She's in the house. We're going to talk to her. We're going to get to know her. She's one of my early IG followers. Um, I should say one of the early follows for me on, on Instagram. I don't know when she decided to follow me. But anyway, um, She's cool. Been trying to get her on here for a hot minute. She kind of vanished for, for a little bit. She had, you know, some other stuff going on in her life. It happens if you're around this community long enough, you know that you just be BFFs with somebody. And then you're like, where'd that guy go? And then he comes back and it's all good. I mean, cause right. Our internet life is not a real life. That stuff changes. So anyway, um, I don't know about you guys, but here in Northeast Ohio, Man, the the daffodils are out. The the spring rains are in full effect. The buds on the trees are popping. And man, I'm just looking over at my forging knife here like, man, I am ready to use this sucker. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be out in the woods this spring, this summer, this fall. And we're going to learn together. We're going to do some uh, forging content. We're going to do some outdoor grows. We're going to do a lot of stuff in nature because let me tell you what. Cultivation is amazing. Let me tell you what else is amazing. Just going out in the freaking woods. So we're going out there. We're going to do some cool stuff. You know, like we're going to Mexico this summer. That's going to be fun. That is going to be a great learning opportunity for me and like 40 other people. So cannot wait for that. Also uh, going to be going to Nama. That's the, the other thing I know for sure I'm going to be doing. That's end of October over in the Pacific Northwest. I was just looking at my little... Uh, 365 uh, nanometer uh, UV light. I got this last year for going on a night hike. I can't quite get that. It's all, Anyway, it's a NAMA logo. i just been looking at my forging backpack. I've been looking at all this stuff like, man, I am ready to go. I cannot wait. Anyway, I'm excited. I'm excited. Ohio winter, right? We're, we just get locked up in our little houses all, all winter. Man, I'm ready to get out. Um, I'm going to shout out Stealthy Spores. He made this for me. And he made me look like a little thinner, didn't he? I, I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Um, if you guys want to get one of those Michael Geeky hero cards or you want to get a deck, you want to get a play mat, whatever you want to do, uh, go to StealthySpores.com. Check it out. Use promo code GEEKY. Uh, all the kickback I get on that's going straight to Michael Mamas for their mycelium revolution. Um, so, you know, supporting a good cause. Um, what else we got going on? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be at Michael Fest. So things for sure. We going to Mexico. I'm going out in the woods, man. Just going to be if you're in Akron and you're in the woods, we might run into each other. It's that simple. Um, what did I say? Mexico, Nama. And Michael Fest. Yep. No, I'm going to those for sure. Might be going to tell you ride. We'll see. I don't know. I might be, I might be plumb out of money. Might not be able to pull that one off. We shall see. Time will tell. Um, and if you guys are in the Ohio area, uh, later in the summer, you guys gotta go to Ohio mushroom festival. I will definitely be there. We're going to have the guys from Ohio mushroom festival on soon. Uh, tell their story. They just, uh, one guy said, let's do a mushroom festival. He said it to a couple of his buddies. Next thing you know, they got like the hottest new mushroom festival on the scene. So we're going to get to know those guys and, uh, hype up, you know, what they did and what they're about to do next year. Uh, cannot wait for that. You're listening to the Michael geeky podcast, a podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental emotional and physical health most people call him geeky and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator advocate and educator every week he sits down with fellow cultivators mushroom educators scientists and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives All right, guys. So we've been getting uh, slow and steady signups on on the Mexico trip. Uh, if you guys want to go this week um, through the nineteenth, we're doing an early bird special. Um, you know, to to be quite honest, we would have loved to announce this six months in advance, eight months in advance. By the time we got all our ducks in a row, it it is what it is. We announced it when we could. Um, 
So I know it's a little bit short notice for a lot of people, um, but it kind of dawned on us, man, people got to get their passports. They got to get you know, some stuff figured out. So we're like, all right, we got to encourage people to sign up now so they got enough time to get ready for this trip. So we're doing an early bird special for individuals going solo on the trip. Uh, we got a $200 discount right now through uh, next Friday for, um, or I'm sorry, this coming Friday. For uh, couples, if, if you're a couple sharing the room, we're going to do uh, 250 each discount, so 500 total. Just go check out the site. Discount's already there. It'll be there through through Friday. Um, get signed up and uh, get ready to have a good time, guys. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for that. That's that's shaping up to be a lot of fun. Excited for a couple of the add-ons we just got. Um, as uh, the weeks approach, we'll, you know, we'll be sitting down and talking with some of the people going on the trip. Um, some cool, some cool people for sure. Um, and then of course, after the trip, anybody that wants to come on, we're going to have to do it after, you know, after trip podcast episode, we'll have everybody on, we'll, we'll, you know, just recount all the tales from the trip and all that stuff. So you guys can live vicariously for a hot second and then, uh, get excited about the next trip and the next trip and the next trip. So we're going to be doing that. Um, yeah, get, getting pretty excited, man. Getting pretty excited. Um, I don't know about you, but I like me some Mexican food, so I need to get back down there. Cannot wait. All right. So without further ado, I think it's time. Let's bring her on. All right. So welcome to the show, Tierra Mycology. What's up? Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. So, you know, I've been around here for about three years. Yeah. And you were, you know, very early on when I got onto Instagram, <laughs> you had an active Instagram. You you know, you were always posting stuff. You had compelling <laughs> content. You were, you know, I was like, okay, she grows. Very cool. I dig it. Um, and then for a hot minute, you vanished. And then you came back. And so when you came back, I said, okay, I got to get her on the show. Got to get her on the show. So here you are. I'm glad to have you. Um, Hope hope you found some sanity in in your your vacation from Instagram. I I could probably use one myself. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very Aquarius of me to vanish and come back. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. I just uh, I have to. I have to. Yeah. And I want to, but I can't. It must be the Libra in me. I'm just. I, oh, I gotta. I, yeah. I don't even know what that means because I'm not into astrology, but it sounds good. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So let's do this. So we got all sorts of stuff to talk about. Um, people on the show, they love talking to real cultivators who truly love to cultivate, who take it seriously, who are passionate about it, who believe in, you know, working good genetics, all that stuff. Um, but first let's do what we always do. Tell me, I want to hear that Myco origin story, the first mushroom memory. Take first, us back. Okay. I'll take you back. It was, I'm just going to mention um, psilocybin mushroom because I've seen mushrooms all my life. I've been really connected to mycelium, but um, the first um, and like really see them grow and see the whole thing. It was in Oregon. I'm, I wasn't living in where I live right now. And my ex um, was a manager at cannabis uh, farm. And then I'm not going to say names just to, for safety, but then he's a system manager was doing a grow in the back. And this guy was like a microbiologist. I mean, he built his own flow hood. He just did the whole thing on his own. I was just, and then one day he's like, do you want to come see this? And, this? and I'm like, yeah. And then I go in there and oh my God, it was a vortex. It was just like, where am I? Like, and this mushrooms were this big, like, and then he's like, do you want to harvest? I'm like, yeah, I, yes, yes, absolutely. And then I just go into this Alice in Wonderland moment where I'm just, I just like, then I harvest and I, I, I'll never forget when I, I grab them. I just had that connection and I was like, I'm going to grow. I'm just going to grow. I, I need to grow. Like I, and then there's just like, you know, they're half animals, half plants. Like they're this. Mm -hmm. galactic beans that you just you know that was my moment and i'll never forget because that was those were um beautiful and um the connection i had it it was from that moment on i think that's when it clicked and i had that calling moment that epiphany that 
everything fell in that moment. And I remember Paul Stamets saying, oh, I heal my stuttering through psilocybin mushrooms and I'm a speech therapist. I'm a, I have an SLPA degree and I work with kids with disabilities and we do stuttering and all sorts of different speech impediments. And then I was like, okay, I'm doing it. I love it. So that's my, my so, story. So that's fascinating because most people, when they do their first mushroom memory, they either talk about when they're a little kid and they first see a mushroom yeah. or they talk about their first trip, usually high school or college. Yeah. But you just did. I don't think we've ever had anybody on the show <laughs> do it like this. You actually had a very unique sort of initiation that you got to see like the wizard of Oz. You got to see the curtain <laughs> pulled back. Yeah. You saw this like high level, you know, lab, you got oh. to see banging tubs off the bat. So you saw the end game. You're like, this looks like fun. I yes. want to do that. That's fascinating. So many mm -hmm. people it's, it's that they have a trip and then they accidentally find themselves yeah. cultivating because they, you know, they need to get mushrooms and the easiest way to do it is to grow it. <laughs> to grow them. So yes. that, that makes total sense. And I could just tell right away that you, from your Instagram account, that you were enamored with the whole process. Like you loved yeah. the cultivation process. It was obvious. So that's, that's very cool. Um, yeah. So how long ago was that? So how long have you been growing? I would say almost five years of hitting the four, uh, four and a half or so. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Uh, -huh. it started there. I started reading, you know, I was a lot yeah. from the month. So first it was a lot of reading. I didn't dare to like do anything. It was just that moment. First, I'm kind of methodical. Like I need to read, understand it and then right. put into action. So the reading was like a whole year of just like reading and watching videos and, that's the second moment where I started uh, watching YouTube with Microtrophic and everybody knows that he's been my mentor and, and I'm so inspired by him. And um, so then I started watching videos and then I got really, you know, taking notes and trying things. And that's when everything started to come together more in action, a little bit more action, not so much into my thoughts and the right. thought realm. It became like, i I, I became I, I became more interested on in actually trying and making mistakes. And that was like my thing. I'm just going to do it differently. I'm going to not use a liner. I'm going to do one liner and the other one, no liner. I'm going to do corn and then I'm going to do rye. And then I'm going to just like, you know, trying all yes. different kinds of things. Yeah. So first off, what did it feel like going from seeing the end game to this period of studying everything I'm sure wanting to like, you know, get it right. Cause you saw where it could go. And then, and then when you start growing right off the bat, you had the FAFO mentality. You were, you were experimenting, <laughs> you were trying things. Yeah. What, what was that feeling like in the beginning that the, I'm finally doing this? How, like walk me through emotionally how that feels to get into that. First of all, I was trying to find women that were doing it. So um, I, you know, she grows fun guys. She's like one of my favorites, um, for everything she does. And then there was Ashley, um, Bro Boomer Shroomer. And then she was doing all these videos and I got her also at the beginning when she just like started doing those, um, videos. So I was just reaching out to them. I was like, Hey, right. I'm here. Let's connect. I was, I, so it went from like really understanding that it was that kind of like a male dominated industry. A little bit just like a him. little bit. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just a little bit. And then I was just like, you know, drilling tubs and like the whole thing, you know, it's just, it's very yang. It's very activating. It's very um, like masculine and in, in it's energy. You know, I'm just not saying masculine to be for, for men, but just mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do it. Okay. Right. So, and then it just, I was scared, obviously, but I was, I'm always trying new things. I, I love to explore and I was not scared. I said, I feel protected. I feel like I'm a medicine woman in so many different realms of my life. I'm working with herb allies. I grow herbs. I grow food. I'm connected to my land back in Argentina. I'm from Argentina. So um, I just feel like 
it went from a little bit of fear, but then really, really excited and committed and connected, just like really connected to the, the medicine. Well, and you wanted it. So that, I mean, isn't yeah. that the great thing about wanting something bad enough? <laughs> then all the other fears, the worries, right? They might be there. But when you want it bad enough, you pick that drill up, you, you chuck <laughs> that bit and you go for yes. it. You might crack a tub or two. Now, speaking I of did. that, yeah. I think I remember you, <laughs> you might have been yeah. the I first think person it. to have like a Dremel tool cleaning up your holes. Just remember thinking <laughs> like... <laughs> I was a general contractor. I built furniture professionally and yeah, I yeah. never thought to pull my Dremel out and just clean the I got holes. a Dremel. Yeah, that's that was so smart. I, I, I got a Dremel and I actually made my first steel airbox by myself with a Dremel. And it was this big and I was like, oh my God, I don't have a flow hood. What am I going to do? And everybody's like, oh, you can do it with, you know, and I was like, okay. And then putting all this, I don't even know the names in English, truly of those like rubbery black things. Oh, the gloves, you, yeah. <laughs> whatever or it is. Or just a ring you, or the gloves? The rings, yeah, yeah the just, rings. Yeah. And then everybody's like, no, don't put the gloves in because then the, the air sucks in and that's not safe. So you could just have to get your hands in straight directly. So there's all this little techniques. And then um, the psilocybin mushroom Bible, I think it was really helpful at that moment. I think I got that book right here somewhere um because um yeah of course i have it um yep, yep. and then <laughs> i have so many i have so many books that help me so i'm a reader i'm definitely a reader and i'm not much of a youtuber but i do love to watch a good sh video that would teach me but um yeah definitely drum everything i was just trying to try everything and it worked it. yeah <laughs> well and you know if you start on still air box you're gonna learn a few things that the people that just right away go by a flow hood they don't they're missing out right they're they're <laughs> missing some of the techniques the slowing you slowing down slow down you know make making sure you're really thinking through how contamination moves how you Everything. can disturb it yeah. all that stuff yeah so that's cool it's humbling. It's very humbling. The yeah, humbling well, experience. So you were still, no, you were like, oh, I was watching videos four and a half years ago. Um, there were not nearly as many videos four and a half years ago as now. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, now it's just, I can't even keep up with everybody. I blink and there's five new podcasts <laughs> and there's 18 yeah. guys doing bucket tech videos. Bucket right? tech, like, yes. I mean, there's, at this point, I think there's 1800 bucket tech videos on, on YouTube. So yeah, there's no short supply, but you were, so you were a lot of people that have come on the show are COVID growers, right? Like something about <laughs> COVID inspired them to grow mushrooms. Sure. And so yeah. you were ahead of that. You were before that. Kind of a little bit before that. Uh -huh. I think I was, I was kind of just doing it already by the time COVID hit mm -hmm. me and I really wanted it. Um, but um, in terms of, um, yeah, I, before I was learning before that, and that helped, you know, because at that time I got COVID and I got really sick. I got the first variant. I don't know what it was. I did too. I didn't. It's called the uh, yeah. You Didn't Want This. Yes. <laughs> you didn't want yeah, it. It was bad. Yeah, that one, that one was bad in, in, in all sorts of neurological stuff for me. So that uh, also gave me the impulse and like i was like okay let's just work on this serotonin receptors and this like rewiring my brain because i we all need that i think i really yeah. needed it back then i was i was not thinking straight at one point and i needed i needed some some assistance in that moment so so now let me ask you this when you first saw that grower your your boyfriend <laughs> working at a cannabis grow and, you know, not surprising. One of the guys there grows mushrooms. You get to see this cool grow up. Had you actually had an experience with psilocybin at that point? I did. You had. Okay. Okay. So, so you'd had, you knew what magic mushrooms were about, but you didn't really, you'd never thought about the cultivation piece. And then you saw it and were just like, no. whoa, this is so cool. Yeah, it was very yes. long ago, but yes, um, I was aware, I uh, was connected. I mean, I 
we I I run an outdoor program for kids. We go mushroom hunting. I mean, I was already connected, like I mm. said, to mycelium, the connection that they have with the plants and how you know they're so important for all this synergistic and like the, for the world. I mean itself, but um, everything that's happening it, it involves uh, mycelium basically in the natural world. But uh, basically, they when I when my experience was very long ago. So okay. I disassociated those two things, and then I was like, this is different. I had I felt like in my heart like something is beating. Like oh, I got to do this. I like it. I think I agree. I mean, I had experiences with mushrooms as a kid, but I almost feel like that was a separate thing. I was young. Yeah. I was using them for a different mm -hmm. reason. I didn't yeah. have any fucking problems yet, right? Like, <laughs> I didn't have traumas. I didn't have issues. I was just young trying to have a good time. So, yeah, definitely a totally different experience. Now, I love that you saw the mushrooms and just you were just hooked from that point on, because that's what I tell a lot of people who want to grow. I say, you know what? Let's not don't worry about a still air box. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about mm -hmm. that. Buy all in one bag. Buy a liquid culture. Yes, yeah. you're cheating, but just grow <laughs> yes. some mushrooms. See what it that feels like. like. Does it yeah. get you excited? Mm -hmm. If you go, great, I grew mushrooms and I can dry these and I can use them and that's all I care about, then cool. I just solved your yeah. problem and I didn't waste a bunch of your money. But then some of these people will come back and go, oh God, all right, so I'm thinking about a flow hood. So I'm thinking about this. I'm th and I'm like, okay, oh, it got you. Something mm -hmm. about that form. And for me, see, once you've actually started to cultivate them, then you get to watch them grow, right? You never get to watch a yeah. mushroom grow in the woods. You just find it. I you mean, maybe if you're it. obsessed, exactly. maybe you walk in the woods a lot, a but lot. most people just see them how they are. Yeah. Watching them grow is so cool. I think that's why Ashley Enders, you know, her, her time-lapse, she was one of the early people to oh, do these yeah. time-lapses. Mm -hmm. Just no one got sick of those. That's just a cool thing to watch. It's so, amazing. Yeah, um, yeah she yeah, really I did. Feel that I way. mean, just from when they're babies just like seeing them the whole the whole process and really understanding what they're doing you know they have a veil the veil breaks yep. and then they go into reproduction and then it changes and then this the spores doing this funny thing and going in their heads and just like i like how you yeah. said a funny thing i would describe <laughs> yeah. it as like a tim burton nightmare <laughs> ask i mean some of those tubs i know you've opened a tub like this and you just oh i have yes and you just like, wish oh. you never opened it yes <laughs> yes the, the i have plague of spores yes no i am actually really really careful so that doesn't happen and That's i good. that was one of my things just i mean sometimes i just let them because i just want to let them mm -hmm. but in terms of you know seeing them um I, I really try really hard to go way before or at least when they break the they break the veils. Like I love seeing that process. It's just mm -hmm. so magical. Just like whoop, you know. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. I mean, I remember the first time somebody did hashtag gill porn on Instagram <laughs> and I was just like, Yes, this is yes. the porn I'm here for. Gil yes. porn. Show me more. I want to show see me it. more. Yeah. We want to see it all, the whole process. I love it. Yeah. And that's one thing I really do love Instagram for is I think, right, you just get these gorgeous photos. It's just so. Right. And then your feed just starts filling up with mushrooms and then you're just living in your little mushroom paradise. It's great. <laughs> yes. And it was back in the day. I mean, I was following, I mean, I can start naming people, but um, everybody was helping me and I, I didn't yeah. know why. Like mm -hmm. I, I just, I was like, from anything stickers genetics lcs grain substrate it was just all this and that was then i was sent back to other people because i was like i just have pay forward this is yeah. such a great community it's not like cannabis it's not like anything else this is we are different we're here to heal and we're here right. to heal together and it's a very different thing and i was just everybody were answering any of I will come up with like a million questions a day, you know, because you're doing the thing and you right. just, even if you have the Bible, even if you have all the YouTube, you're still going to stay 
is it this really, do I need to soak the grain like two more minutes? When is it really, so? when is it, you know, it's just like the all, and everybody would answer those like little questions that I had. And I just thought it was the best community I've ever been. Like I felt so supported by women and by men, by everybody. It was so beautiful. It's pretty awesome. And I I was never a member of the cannabis community, especially like the industry that got built up. But I yeah. have heard all sorts of stories. And I always <laughs> just go, wow, it wouldn't take much to be better than that. Uh, that sounds pretty terrible. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, people want to help out. I mean, one of the coolest things I remember early on was doing trades with people. And then these trades, guys would yeah. send me letters. And I'm like, did the grown ass man just write me a letter? I know I got so many. I still Wrote have me a them. letter. I have, I have a whole, um, a whole uh, envelope or whatever that all the people that send mm -hmm. me letters and cards and stickers, yeah. and um, all the girls. Just like I mean, I'm seeing all the people that started kind of with me and also getting really big. Mm -hmm. um, and then I met them at the psychedelic conference in LA. The, I think it was the first psychedelic conference in LA I was there and I met all these people in person and yep. took a big picture and that was a moment that I'll never forget because um when you when you're growing and you have so many questions but we're all going towards the same direction and we have the same calling it feels really good to be validated and 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 just like I felt I, I met up so many women that were growing there so I was like okay we're we're doing this and then I, I became part of this Facebook um that is uh women who ladies of mycology um so yeah, i mean what ladies, is it at yeah. Sixteen thousand members now oh yeah i remember back in the day i like instagram when i had two or three thousand followers and i in my head i thought maybe there were fifteen thousand people growing mushrooms it, like <laughs> worldwide yeah. and and i mean obviously i've i've adjusted that belief at this point but yeah they i mean it shows you that the demographic is changing. When I started this show, there was essentially no women watching my show. It was like 0.01% women. So like, I guess mm -hmm. a woman was watching my show. Me. And, and maybe you. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like t over 10%. So in, yeah. in, in a little over a year to go from no percent to 10%, that's a big shift. And I think yeah. it's because of people like you People oh. like, you know, Ashley Enders, she grows mm -hmm. some of these early female growers that were very present on social media. And like you're just saying, you know, it's cool to hear about this. Like you were just connecting with everybody. Oh, yeah, I was. And, they would reply yeah. immediately. And we were and Ashley sent me her one of her first like uh, monotubs, like the little plastic ones that she makes with yep. the little red mm -hmm. buttons and. She didn't have to, but she did and all the yeah. stickers and she's such a, she's a teacher. I mean, I, I know she's yeah. like, I don't know if she was her profession, but, and I'm sure she's not, not teaching anymore, but it has, it, she has it in her and, um, oh, yeah. so, so good. So good. And she grows is amazing. I mean, that's genetics. I mean, really like truly every time yeah, I use that, I mean, it's just like, ugh. yeah, I go on and on about how my first great vendor experience was Missy Maiko. And I will Ms. say Michael, to, yeah. to date still, she's got like really killer genetics. Oh yeah. Missy Michaels. She, yeah. I, I get, I get stuff from her too. Yeah. I mean, I get stuff from all people because I also love to try different genetics from, from, yep. Yep. you know, from everybody. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. when I, um, uh, when I went to the psychedelic conference and, you know, getting the title away for the first time from him and I was just yeah. like everything, um, and they're so good. It's so different. Like people don't like, I hope people understand that having great genetics is the start of yeah. the, everything, you know, it's, that's oh, yeah. what it is. People are really doing the work and transferring a million times until that thing is perfect. Yeah. And it's clear. And it's like consistent. dating, right? Like when you're 18 <laughs> and you go on your first date and it's lousy, you don't yeah. just go, well, I guess I'm never going to date a woman ever again. You don't do that. You go, okay, that one wasn't good. I'm going to yeah, date that. until I find a good one. Yeah. Date your genetics, right? Like date I hear, your genetics. Yes. Yeah. I hear people go, oh, I tried growing that. It sucked. Well, you grew one version of that. Mm, like yeah. then you find out, oh, you got spores. You only worked one grow off of, you know, a couple transfers. Mm -hmm. Dude, come on. 
give me a break. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yes. And, and I, and I love how, um, invested the people are really selling genetics are like most. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like really just trying their best. Like, um, I buy some stuff sometimes from Michael alchemy and, yeah. um, and I love like what they do. Like I really, it's so clean. I just, I mean, there's so many people that do it clean, but I'm just naming a few people and it's not, I, yeah, I that's cool. I name your it. people. Yeah. And name my people. Yes, name your people. And it's, um, yeah. And, and I got from early on starting different things and they were, um, from substrate to grain. I mean, I, I didn't have a pressure canner at the beginning. So I was just like, I don't even want to do it without it. I just, I was scared and obviously you can't. So, um, and then until I got my PC, then, um, and then I started experimenting more and more, but, um, I tried so many and, and great stuff. Like you, you can tell when about five years, uh, yeah, four years ago, about three and a half years ago, you can tell who was doing, like who was getting going to get big and take it really seriously and who was really professional, um, and committed. And then lots of spam also like careful out there what you buy i mean i'm serious like you can come and ask me if you want to buy from like i would love to just tell i love to tell people where to buy like that's yep. people ask me all the time do you sell do you sell I'm like i'm not no no i'm not there yet because <laughs> circumstances in life and moving and places and all the things that i've been through for the past five years which been crazy um I couldn't really do what I really, but I, that's why I was going to tell you, I was, I'm going to move back to Argentina and okay. I'm going to have a proper lab. Like there I want go. this whole time, <laughs> a proper lab, like I deserve. And watch out Argentina, to... all you Argentinian yeah. growers out there. Y'all are about to get served. <laughs> you guys are going to get served yeah. by Tierra Mycology. Watch out. Yes. Oh yeah. You're going to like, you're going to change the game in Argentina for sure. Oh, my country needs yes. so much medicine. They're going through a rough time, new precedent. Everything is happening right now and people are suffering. Yeah. So like real hard. I mean, not that in other places are not, um, I'm just connected to my land right now, yeah. big time. And I was, I was like, this is, it just came to me through new years. Oh, I gotta go back. Like I, mm -hmm. I wasn't able to expand as much as I wanted here. So, uh, just, you know, paying rent, paying the lab, oh my paying God, this, paying that. And I was just like, okay, if I can't do it here, then I'm going to do it where I can. Um, right. I'm not attached. I'm not attached to places. I'm moving, uh, with my, you know, wherever my psyllium takes me and this is, I'm going to go back to my roots and I'm going to deliver medicine to yes. my people. I love it. Yes. Oh, you're going to mm -hmm. be Watch out. You'll be running for Congress in no time. <laughs> I hope yes. so. I'm like, I want to, I want to, but it's, the laws are different there than here. I mean, there's some places here that are, you know, doing, you know, right. they're, they're different here and over there, but we'll see. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not, I'm not growing 800 tubs trying to get rich. So <laughs> I, 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 I like, I'm, I wouldn't say it's cocky, but I'm kind of like, I'm doing this for the right reasons. Like, I really believe people have a right to grow this medicine for themselves. I'm just trying to yeah. help people figure out how to do that. I don't, yeah. I don't lose sleep at all. I don't feel like a bad person. Uh, none of that stuff. Yeah. No, which is, I think education is the most important thing. I think if people understand that just educating yourself whenever, like, I also want to say this medicine is not for everybody. I think um, sometimes people with the hype, they just uh, go to like grab something and put it in their bodies. Um, I personally take my body as my temple and every body is different. So your elements and your body. And I think it's just so important to access this as number one, sacred medicine. Number two is ancient. Uh, number three, there's codes in it. And don't, don't maybe don't try for what's it called MEO or whatever, you know, just go with right. the real, with the real, gift from mother earth and um maybe if you have depression if you have anxiety if you have ptsd i mean really um take read about it and and take it really seriously because i think 
it, it works in your serotonin receptors. It's so important. I mean, at least for me, I have ADHD. I had anxiety all my life and I suffer through it um, multiple times. And it, the um, knowing the amount, knowing what is your dose, um, because the dose is you know, it's a journey itself. Like what's my dose? Like, especially for microdosing, like people need to find that specific little dose. And I think taking it seriously is and educate yourself. Um, is I think it was the number one thing for me, like really take it with grace and, and, and really respect the, you know, natives who've been taking care of this medicine for thousands of years. I mean, personally, um, I just always want to talk about Maria Sabina <laughs> every sure. time. I just always want to honor her and her work. And one of the main reasons I've always um, been inclined to Mazatec, um, Mazatec or whatever it's called. Um, it's the reason the 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 Sierra Mazateca, I mean, in Mexico, mm -hmm. I've been really connected with people from there and talking in person uh, about about it and just really connected with the whole thing that started over there just so much respect like so much respect and and taking one day at a time with the medicine i think it's really important and everybody who wants to grow i think needs to really understand the process as a sacred process too and and leaving the money aside which is gonna go like we were talking about it before like really soon it's already gone not, <laughs> it's gone it's, it's gone. gone yes it, it's not it's really and and there's one i just want to mention one place where i live um it's called district 216 and they're doing like psychedelic stuff and like research and blah, 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 and um groups and i've been invited to be part of it um i wasn't really ready or anything but at the same time i was and some part of me was like let me just really understand what does it mean to be in society and in a psychedelic club and what like what does it mean to me um and the respect i have for this medicine or do i just want to be behind the curtain and just like do my little prayers and do my my thing to honor this as sacred um and that took me a while to to really understand understand it and respect it as it is so i think that's also important like and when you learn, learn from people that are really, I mean, they'll find you. I mean, I found all those people, like it's um, what you think is seeking you. So it's just like, I, I found people that were really, um, really connected to the sacred aspect of it, not just like selling, 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 or just like having a product or what, whatever it is. I just, uh, I love that. I was just talking to a guy, one of my buddies in Los Angeles, um, and he just said, you know, if, if the money was gone, would you still grow? <laughs> and we're about to find out. I said, bro, we're about to find out because yeah. money's about to go away. So let's see who sticks around and who doesn't. Let's see how nasty everybody decides to get or who, who actually demonstrates, right. The, 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 the spiritual awakening that can happen from using this medicine or the healing that can happen from the medicine we're about to see. We are about yes. to see. Yes. Yeah. The, um, for me, the, like the, the ancient history of this, right. I just think like, okay, so Terrence and Dennis McKenna bring <laughs> mushrooms over like 60, 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about indigenous use of magic mushrooms in various cultures around the country or around the, the world mm -hmm. for tens, likely tens of thousands of years. Yeah. Not 50 years, not mm -hmm. 10 years, you know, like, oh, we're in a psychedelic renaissance. It's been going on for two years or four years, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Talking about not even hundreds of years. We're talking about thousands, if not tens of thousands of years that this medicine has been used. And I'm sitting back going, they probably figured a few things out. Yes. Like, what did we figure out in 50 years? They had 10,000 years, probably figured a few things out. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. Yes, I agree. And also the connection to ritual, you know, yeah. connection to ritual and singing. And it's not like you're just going to take this thing, like you're taking a pill 
and it's going to magically change your brain and you're going to rewire your circuits and you're going to heal your trauma and your patterns. And it doesn't work like that. It works when you sit down and you listen and you embody it and then and you, you do ritual, whatever is your ritual and whatever your religion is, you can, you know, um, sit down and pray or you can journal or you can sing or you can dance and you can bring your herb allies that are also super connected to mushrooms and bring herbs to your ritual. I mean, I do so many, so many rituals. I mean, I'm, everything's a ritual in my life at this point in time. And, um, and just really understand why it's so powerful. I mean, it really is one of the most powerful things I've ever experienced in my life in a very small amount. And it's sub-perceptual. I'm not even feeling it. And it's still in my body. I can yeah. still feel the connection. I feel connected. I feel um, like alive. I feel in creation. I think that I think the biggest thing for me is I've been in survival for so long because I've been on my own. I came to this country on my own. I've been, you know, my mom was a single mom. I mean, everything just got me to be on my yang energy and come out in the world and get it. So it's very masculine to do that. And then just to sit down and to be on my feminine and yin and receive it was through mushrooms. Like I sat down and became part of Gaia and just like the earth, but also understand that, yes, it is still working in my 5H2TA receptor. Yes. I'm, I'm, I don't need to be, I mean, I'm not condemning, like I'm not saying people shouldn't get hero doses. Like I love when people I'm because my nervous system is so, um, (laughs) wired from all my life and my survival. I can't do those things. Um, and, I've only done once that it wasn't that that big of a dose, but like it still helped me. But instead of being in survival to be in creation, I think that was the biggest change and shift. And when I see women coming to me and saying, this changed my life, like women have come to me and said, I look at my children like I've never looked at them before. I'm so grateful to be a mother, like people that have depression, anxiety, People that are trying to get off their medication, they don't want to be with pharma anymore. They just want to be natural, like be in their natural senses, right. be in the yeah. world. Like it's so powerful. I mean, how can we just, you know, I really hope people with all this psychedelic, I would say revolution, or I don't know what to call it, if it's like, um, because I, I I'm think ready for the revolution. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. we're at least in a yeah. Renaissance, but yes. Yeah. Renaissance revolution, yeah. whatever you want to call it. I think they really, and the government or whatever, like they just let us be, you know, we just need to be in, in our power and like in our center and our, in our creation. And that's so um, life-changing, you know? Now that's fascinating what you said about, um, you know, that you're still sub perceptual, um, but, but you still feel more connected to source, more connected to just the better things. And then you, you said, somebody said to you one time that they felt more present with their kids, that they, that they see their kids differently. Mm -hmm. When my wife talks to her friends about microdosing, That is literally one of the taglines she uses. She says, Mm. I can be more present with my kids. Mm, Normally I'd be all in my head worrying about, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to cook dinner. I got to return this to TJ Maxx. I got to do. And she's (laughs) like, but on, on a microdose day, I'm right there. I'm all in. Yes. Yes. Talk about the default mode network in your brain. I mean, I studied it because I studied the brain through uh, speech pathology and um, traumatic brain injury. Oh my God. I bet for speech impediments, (laughs) that's like the whole deal, right? I mean, I would think it will be implemented. I want to believe that it will happen. Like I just really want to believe it will happen because building new circuits in your brain, not only neuro neuroplasticity, but neurogenesis, both, you know, it's just, right. we do it through, I mean, I've seen uh, work on, on this field where you're trying to rewire your brain and it's uh, neuro, neuro, I don't know, it's like neurology, but whatever. And mm-hmm. it's still, you're working through it through patterns and looping and all these right. things. And this specific exercises for this, this medicine goes right in there. 
and it just it just it just wants and it, you to and perceive. it speeds it all up it speeds things yeah. up St things that would normally yeah. take years can happen just like that yeah and it's like for me it feels like um instead of being in your default mode network just overthinking and thinking and overthinking trying to solve and decode and plan and analyze and then you're all of a sudden you're like a child you're in your senses yep and you're just breathing and what looking at things and smelling and hearing and just being pre that's what it is to be present for me just like really sit down and be not in here because talk about Aqu aquarius but aquarius is air um and you too are air libra is an air so mm -hmm. it's very airy <laughs> we're just floating yeah but I'm floating um, all the time yeah. Here, we're just go, floating all the time. Yes. <laughs> you just bring it down, bring it yeah. down to earth, and just feel more grounded. Uh, that's that's what it feels true. Like. I need that. Mm -hmm. Yes, my therapist gave me a little little graphic to to keep on my phone, and it was like uh, the five, four, three, two, one approach to to ground yourself, right? And it was oh. all sense. It was all sense based. So it was like, so if you're losing your shit and and you're you know mm -hmm. not handling a situation well, whether you're getting depressed anxious angry whatever like you're you're just mm -hmm. losing it you you five things you can see four things you can hear you. three yes. two one down the all the senses though and so yeah. that yeah the grounding yourself that way it's a big deal even when people go on trips right you if you have yeah. a shaman or, or a guide right and they do mm -hmm. the feathers on your face they do the sounds that these are yeah. all linking you to your senses that's yeah getting you out of your, like you said, default mode network. Yeah. St stop thinking, start feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you yeah. said something else that I had never thought about this. Um, Cause I also have ADHD. Um, yeah. I've read enough about it to know that people like us, we do very well with structure, like really mm -hmm. formal structure. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and you were like, man, my whole life now is like a, like a, just a bunch of rituals. And I was like, Oh my God, instead of see, cause if someone tells me, Geeky, your life needs to be more structured and formal and precise, my whole yeah, psyche yeah. just says, get the <laughs> fuck away from me. No, I'm like, aloha, yeah. hang loose. I can't do that. Yeah. But I can get down with a ritual, right? Like if it really matters. So that's interesting. How did you, like, what brought you to ritualizing more of your life? How, how did that process happen? I think I just, um, in terms of ritual, I've always been like that. And my mom is also like that. So you light a candle and you mm. burn some Palo Santo. And then you, it's almost, you just get your body into a void of not thinking and just really sitting with an intention. So mm -hmm. for me, every ritual in the morning, I wake up and I drink my water with lemon and salt so I can, you know, hydrate my body and be alkaline. And then I wait for 20 minutes. So it's like, it helps me feel like, because when I'm in a rush, I just hate it. I hate to be in a rush. I just feel like I'm, I can't do it. I feel like, oh, I can't even drink coffee. I mean, imagine I'm very sensitive. So like, mm -hmm. this is why. I mean, I can way, tell you yeah. just talked about <laughs> coffee and I could tell your energy, like just thinking <laughs> about coffee, you like, it was like you were on coffee. Yeah, it, I can't do coffee um, or, you know, well, I do chocolate, of course, but, you know, caffeine in any sense. But um, yeah, ritual itself, it's from the morning and it helps me get through an intention clearly and just do it because otherwise I'm in my head. I'm very ADHD. Like I cannot express how much right. ADHD I have like I and being a grower is very methodical and it really mm -hmm. helps me because I need to put my gloves on first and then do the spray and then right. turn on the thermal helix and what, whatever right. it is just like this every and it helps I mean it helps even to write it down I mean I got lists but also if you give me if, you, if someone else gives me structure and you know I don't like that I'm with <laughs> this you. is like it's just yeah. like no i just i'm i'm late i'm always late you know i'm always 10 minutes late like i'm i just like to flow with my own but in my life building i know people see me all over the place probably that's their perception of me but i 
I, I'm okay with that. I don't mind. But in my life, I do a lot of rituals for my body. So I guess nice. that's what that's what it is. And you see all the supplements here in the back right here. Um, just, you know, um, reading a book at night and just writing a little note for the day, just you know, doing meditations and all that. It just really helps right. my nervous system. And it all comes down to the nervous system, I think. Um, and being a little bit neurodivergent in a way, because it's okay to understand that we all feel and perceive the world differently. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. do what works, you know, just do what works for you. If, if, if ritual helps, I mean, whatever works for you and, and it's okay. And I think mushrooms assist a lot on that because just from being present and, and, you know, set and setting, you're setting an intention and True. you're, or, yes. you're just setting your mind and setting the environment so that that intention has meaning and you can get there. So right. I think that's so important. Like also well, very important piece. Yeah. Also think about this. You just got me thinking about. <laughs> so the thing I said earlier about how, you know, whatever reason you buy into it, you know, we've been using psychedelics in modern society for not even a century but there's, you know, indigenous history that's possibly tens of thousands of years long. Well, to go along that as well, if if Homo sapiens, right, like our people, our species yeah. has been around for at least 100,000 years, possibly longer. And we know that they had rituals going way back, like one of the new documentaries on Netflix proved that even pre-homo sapien i forget which species it is but but right the us before us yeah also mm -hmm. had ritual uh behaviors that they did for uh burying the dead so yeah i'm sitting here thinking just in this talk about ritual right now this was a survival technique this was mm -hmm. right this grounded them this kept them feeling safe so mm -hmm. much of early religion is heavily ritualized so if you look at ritual as a uh, as a salvation, as a, a modality for healing, as a modality for health, mm -hmm. that's yes. right. Instead mm -hmm. of going, ah, no rituals, I hate religion. Right. But, you know, it doesn't doesn't have to be that way. It can just be any any ritual. My yeah. my my cultivation is my ritual like that for yeah. sure is, is ritualized. Mm -hmm. Yes, like I agree. Today is a grain day. Okay. Yes. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, so speaking of that, so let's get a little bit into, um, so you've been growing quite a while, been growing almost twice as long as I have. So talk to me uh, about where you started, some of the text you, text you used in the beginning versus where you are now, like, you know. You, you talked a little bit about, I finally got the pressure cooker. I started out in a still air box. I used to use this grain. Now I use this grain, mono tubs versus bags. Like walk me through kind of your journey of the tax and what you really like now for cultivating. Sure. Um, well, I did start with a still air box because that was what it was and what I had at the moment. So I needed to do every little thing just you know, agar transfers to a bag, whatever it was. Um, and the bags that we usually buy them were already sterile um, because I didn't, you know, I didn't have the PC. So that's why I got to know all these people in this community because I really needed those pieces. But I, I was understanding that I would get there. I was just really trying and also different kinds because, you know, every every grain is different and then I try to find out which one I like the most and why um what is soaking what is no soak method oh I cannot do that then I'm saving time <clears throat> so it went from like really understanding what takes the most time what is most exhausting what's the most heavy thing for me to lift because <laughs> at that point I was like oh really I need to lift this pressure canner with six bags in it I don't think I can <laughs> um but I did it I mean I had um, actually um, a friend that was also sort of a mycologist and we kind of 
at one point I had space and then he had the flow hood and I was like, nice. okay, we're doing this. We're doing this. You I, had a flow hood friend. I had a flow hood friend. It. Yes. Yeah. And he saved my life and he, you know who you are if you're watching. Cause, Shout out um, to Mr. Flow hood. You, yes. you make a difference with your flow hood. He, he made a difference in my life in the whole process. Um, and very spiritual guy very respectful, so committed. I mean, he's amazing. I love him so much. And yeah, he was my business partner. So we collaborated on doing it together and it was perfect. Then things happen and you just have to move out multiple, multiple times. <laughs> and then it just keep, you know, it kept happening. This is why I decided to just go where it's easy. That was one of my intentions to just let's just go where it's easy because this has been really kind of hard. So, I mean, I did back tech for a little bit. Um, I wasn't a fan because I would always end up cutting the bags and letting them breathe and just like, oh, I just feel like they're suffocating and they're calling me at night. I have dreams about them. I don't know. I wake up at 6 a.m. just running to cut those bags. <laughs> Just like I know that um, feeling. Yes, I it's know. just like they can't breathe. Oh my gosh. Okay, so and there wasn't much of a flush, um, but no, I actually had some success. Um, depends on what variety, but um, certain varieties really thrive. Some of them are slow growers, like all the albinos and all that. Are really hard. Um, I even um, I actually had some success with, uh, can I mention varieties here? Or like, is it yeah, of course. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So like, um, Trinities and really good stuff. Um, but back tech. So when I, what I decided to do was what if I have a smaller tub? So if I get contamination, which honestly it happened a few, like, yeah, a few times, of course I have contamination, but not as much as I ever thought I would. I would get <clears throat> and then what if instead of a 55 or 54 quart or whatever that amount the the regular one is what if I just get half and then I save you know in terms if, if anything goes wrong or whatever happens then I don't right. lose that much and they work really well they were like the smaller little tubs but they still look exactly the same they're still mm -hmm um you know the same the same lids and everything and um just like this like this big and that was what was working for me so move from bigger tubs to back tech to smaller tubs um and then just doing liquid culture was really fun with my business partner just really seeing the whole thing <laughs> and okay. just experimenting with like oh now i have i have so much abundance of this i don't need to worry anymore i cloned it it's there yep. i have it in my fridge and it's like it was such a good feeling not to feel like i was not having or contempt i mean the plates is i mean agar agar i don't know how people call it but um is an art and let me say i have so much inspiration and like respect for um, people that do agar, agar, because um, I just feel like that's that's it's hard. I mean, I've seen those. You can figure some stuff out on the plate. Yes, you definitely so much, can. So much and see so much on the plate. So um, <clears throat> tried a lot of stuff in the plate because I had the flow hood. So at that moment, it was really fun to see it grow and um, try this, like everything, you know. And then I had to, like I said, I had to move out. So then that ended. And then I, at one point I said, okay, I'm just not going to grow. I'm just, if it's getting too hard, I'm just going to stop and it's okay. You know? And I stopped. And so that was that your sabbatical from Instagram? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My sabbat I, I said, it's okay to stop. Um, I'm welcoming change in my life. I had, I struggle with change sometimes, but I know I want to go with the flow with the change and I received the change and I was just like, okay it's okay. And then still people were asking me, you know, where do I get this? And, you know, I was still a little bit active on Instagram because I wanted to reply to people and mm -hmm. people asked me all the time to buy things. So I would just send them to my friends, you know, right. <clears throat> to the people I trust. And then, um, I was in town. I gave a, some workshops in person, um, of all the things I knew and an apothecary, um, that is in local with 
people that I know, so people that I trust, and uh, some group ceremonies and things in town. So more like in person stuff. So I started being more like, let me help you. How can I be there for you? How can I be of service in person of what I learned this past all these years? How can I support people in person that are going through this? So I taught people how to grow. Um, I taught people how, you know, I studied mostly my microdosing information always comes from the microdosing Institute, but also from other people. Um, and I got to multiple times see Michaela, Michaela Del Maico, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I love her work so much. I have so much respect for her and what she does. And I got to see her a couple of times in person at some meetings and one in San Diego, some in Santa Barbara. And I just sharing information that was like, I said, okay, I'm just going to be here for support for of service of knowledge. And I was just doing that this nice. whole time. Yeah. So it's nice to connect with the people in real life. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's good. We're so alone in our labs, right? Or we're yes. just, on our phones, texting people. And that's cool, but there's nothing like actually being around a person, showing them how to do something, seeing, Mm -hmm. you know, the light bulb go off or having Mm -hmm. them ask you a question in person and you answer it and they go, Oh, that, Oh, okay, cool, man, man. I've been trying to, I've been trying to figure that out for like four months. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And some, some things really can only happen in person. Yeah. You can't text certain things. You can't text the intonation of your voice. I mean, I guess you can voice message it. But <laughs> yeah. But certain things you can't, I don't, I wasn't typing those things. I didn't want those right. things on my phone. Right. So I said, meet me for coffee, meet me for tea, meet me at the park. Let's go to the beach. You know, and and I just decided to, there's a lot of women's circles that I go to. There's a lot of meditation circles that I do, Um, even contact dance, like a lot of things that I do in this community is so healing where I live. Hopefully I can bring all that um, to where I'm from, but it's just very connected. And I just, I was just sharing what I've learned all these years and, and it felt really um, rewarding. rewarding. Yeah. Now you get to go to Argentina. (laughs) <laughs> you get to do all that again a million times for everybody. That is very cool. Yes, I'm gonna get a a flow hood, like everything, like because um obviously um the I mean I'm still working with my job and I thank God I'm so grateful I can still do what I um my my formal job that is so rewarding as well and I can just and also just go back home and I want to grow a lot of lion's mane, you know, like I mm-hmm. love lion's mane. I'm lion's mane. is like one thing I do take every single day. Like I just, it just helps me so much. And I said, you know what, where's the lion's mane in my town, small little town. Where is it? Does anybody know <laughs> like what it is, how to get it, how to grow Probably it? Not. Like, Probably. Let's do it. Like, so number one, I said, Oh, I'm definitely bringing lion's mane to my my town so let's just help let's just start with you know with the basics and and just really just really do it you know and really do it properly because i'll be able to you know the 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 difference between the dollar and the peso is just um different so i'll be able to afford what i cannot afford here and just um it's one of my dreams i mean to really have like a like a proper lion's mane, like lab and, and make it into like a big deal. Like that was one of my, cause I did grow lion's mane here in town and we actually taught kids how to grow mushrooms at a farm that is oh, local. Cool. So they even saw like reishi and, and, and cordyceps and lion's mane. And it was so beautiful. Like these kids are in love with mushrooms. They're obsessed. They even know more than I know. Like, I don't even know. They're just so, they love information. They just soak it in and they remember every single detail that my ADHD brain probably doesn't remember, but they do, they do remember everything. So I was just like, ah, oh, I just, so those are the things that keep me going. Like, I know like children need to be connected to mushrooms. Uh, children need to be outdoors. Um, those are I I would love to. I have so many ideas and dreams that I can take back home. 
Well, I can relate to that because I mm-hmm. lived pretty much where you lived or where you still live and mm-hmm. it got expensive. We had yeah. two kids after the second kid, it just got really expensive. We were <clears throat> we were, we were never traveling for fun. We were only traveling to see our parents who were getting older and sicker. Yes. And, uh, there was just a breaking point where we're like, okay, guess we're going home. I mean, we, we moved out there to work in Hollywood. We weren't working in Hollywood anymore. Yeah. So yeah, we're like, okay, time to go. I don't, I don't regret it. I do miss, I mean, people are cool as hell out in LA. People are cool in yes, Southern yeah. California. People are just cool. Hate to tell you everybody who hates, that neck of the woods. Most of those people <laughs> never even been there in the first place, but yeah, cool people out there. Open-minded yeah. people like to, you know, like you said, dance and sing and do stuff. Yeah. 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 And Oregon was cool too. You know, mm-hmm. like I went to Oregon for a year and it was a lot of rain and I yeah. literally was in the woods every single day, geared up finding mushrooms. That's yeah. like, I had nothing else to do. I was just I cannot be indoors. I'm just like, so I was right. doing Alice in Wonderland multiple times in Oregon and those trees, let me tell you, I've never seen the trees and the fern and the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first time I ever went to the Pacific Northwest, I was like, okay, I've seen this. I've seen it in Goonies. I've, I've seen, <laughs> you know, these iconic forests. Oh my God. And every time I go back, I got a brother-in-law in in Portland, so we go to Portland a lot, and then we like to go, you know, whether it's the Oregon coast or go up to Washington, Seattle, you know, places like that, Vancouver. Man, I mean, like you said, it rains all the time. There's these huge forests. Mm -hmm. There's nothing but mushrooms, you know, wherever you want to go, just mushrooms almost year-round. Yeah, it's really fun. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a different experience. Mushroom hunting is not like there's a lot of people that really enjoy mushroom hunting and they're really good at identifying mushrooms and all that is like a whole different world um, that I tried for that one year. So we go on this trips just to mushroom hunt and identified and see them. And then you got your book, you got your thing, you just Mm -hmm. find them. And that's a different world versus growing them. And I appreciate both worlds. I think it's just good to connect no matter what with you know, mother mycelium in a way. And uh, just, I call it mother mycelium because I've been writing a children's book for so long and it's called mother mycelium. Awesome. Uh, but I've been, yeah, it's just because I did it with children too as well. So go to the forest. And that was when COVID was and I could not see them inside. So that worked perfectly. Uh-huh. So it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's two different things, but I think I have appreciation for both for sure. So, I agree. I I think so. Here's my take on on the the field mycology, right? The the mushroom hunters, the taxonomists. I think right now, right, there's this huge growing interest uh, in mushrooms for a bunch of different reasons. It's not just psychedelics. It's like you said, lion's mane. It's other mm-hmm. functional mushrooms, or it's just generally speaking, uh, guys like Alan Rockefeller or William Padilla Brown or Paul Stamets. Yeah who are these little like internet micro celebrities who are turning a lot of people onto, Oh, cool. Oh, you showed me a random ass mushroom that I never heard of. Oh, mm-hmm. I kind of like this. This is neat. I like learning about stuff, especially when people are in cool places showing me cool mushrooms. But then what I notice is people want to get into it, but a lot of the content that they see is like, a brown basic mushroom and then the person's like identifying it and they're describing all the features and the they're using all these latin terms and very quickly they go oh shit i'm never gonna like how am i ever gonna figure all this stuff out they don't realize those people have been doing it for 20 years like there's nothing that you could do for 20 years you wouldn't get good at i don't care how bad at basketball you are if you actually did it for 20 years you wouldn't be terrible you, you would, yeah, yeah. from day one to 20 years, you'd be pretty great. Yeah. There's almost nothing. I mean, pick an instrument. In 20 years, if I played it every day, I'd be real freaking good at it. Yeah. So um, I just tell people, like, if, if you're really interested, don't let the, seeing these people that know so much, like you go to a NAMA conference and you go, man, I'm never going to know all this. Well, maybe not. 
But <laughs> if those people had that attitude when they started, then they would never have that information. So like, yeah. it's cool. Just if you dig something, get into it. Don't worry about whether people, oh, they, they think I'm wrong. I guess the wrong name of a mushroom. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Like, the only time <laughs> it so matters. Hard. Yeah, it, it doesn't it's matter like, though. Like who, why does it matter? You didn't write a paper, right? When people yeah. go, what is this mushroom right on some Facebook ID group? What is this mushroom? And somebody says, and then somebody else goes, ha ha, you're a moron. It's not that, it's this. Cool. Yeah. We're on Facebook, <laughs> guys. We didn't write a scientific paper that mattered or, or that the other scientific people in the community are relying on. We're just yeah. trying to enjoy mushrooms. We're trying yeah. to learn. Like, yeah, that's all it is. Learn. Same and with, also with varieties, I was going to say, you just mentioned that, but um, the kinds of mushrooms, but like in our field or whatever, how many varieties are they? Oh my like God. People yeah. are really getting into what does it mean and how much percentage and which ones are good for micro and which ones are good oh, for yeah. macro and where does it come from? What's the spirit of it? Where it, because it comes with the place that it grew that grows. You know, you can't take that away from the mushroom. I mean, like they, I think personally, <clears throat> they have a spirit. And some are, like I said, more yin or more yang. Like you know, some herbs like lavender are very soothing and yin and nurturing, and some are like super activating, like your mate and like more masculine. So I feel like that's something that if people are talking about learning and you you want to get geeky <laughs> you want to get right. you know you get you want to geek out on like some really cool stuff then really get into the varieties like there's right. so much and it's just coming out right now thanks to like high fail labs and people like that that are really testing the stuff and like you mm -hmm. can really see all the i love watching those like spreadsheets with every single kind and right. all the percentages and and, and it's just like if you really want to um, and yeah, it might, some people may find it boring, but I think if you, if it's really calling you, then get really deep into that. You don't have right. to be perfect. You don't have to know everything. It's kind of impossible. I mean, I, you just go with the information that is available, but I think if you're going to get, I think that's a topic that actually fascinates me. And I believe I'm not really good at because there's so much is, um, a lot of information <laughs> of having fireworks oh. behind. How did that just happen? What did I do? I don't know. Hold on. I got to mark this time. 106. I have no idea how that just occurred. What did I do? What did, did I do something in my hands that prompted? Or No, I... Dude. <laughs> what is that fireworks? I am fire. Wow. You just, imbo <laughs> you just tapped into... Gaia energy and <laughs> it just came out just then. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's anything in the the programming of this. I can look really quick, but is it my uh, phone? Like, um, I just saw fireworks no. and I thought it was so cool. Oh, cause... I I saw it as well. Yeah, I don't okay. know what. <laughs> wow! Whoa! Whoa! Wow. Fireworks around me. Yes, it's crazy. Um, I love that. That's great. Yeah. That's cool. That must be my ascendant in Sagittarius because Sagittarius is fire. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I a, do th love astrology. That's a, that's a totally new one for me. I have never yeah. had, had that happen before. I love that. And you know, some people are actually in the book, you know, Peter McCoy book and everything. I just bring that in just because I said fire and I brought astrology. You know how my brain works as an sure. ADHD. But um, people that really truly understand alchemy and they've been doing extractions and like spagyric tinctures. Like, mm -hmm. like one of my favorite is feral fungi. And he wrote a part on Peter McCoy's book. And like, they relate every mushroom to the planets. Mm -hmm. And that just blew my mind. I mean, really like, like true alchemy, which is engaging with nature and like basically um, getting your base matter and your prime matter and just perfecting it and clearing it into mm -hmm. to become gold the gold version so you can talk about you know alchemy of your psyche just like getting yourself into a, a state of like being your higher self and the best version of yourself but truly in combination with mushrooms which is what these people are doing the work on 
it's just really understanding their relationship of mushrooms with the whole world and like the planet but also the all the planets and astrology and the movements and the sun and the moon and how everything works synergistically on earth and there's a reason for everything and that just like i think talk about geeking out like when i read that oh my god it blew my mind because i actually been studying alchemy for a long time that's why my alchemia became my brand and Mm -hmm. alchemia uh was created because of that because um the relationship that i had with myself and transforming transmuting and transcending like who i was and that happens in nature all the time right Right. but these people really did the work to understand the alchemy of mushrooms and i thought that that the moment i read that i would did not stop reading about it like Mm. I just kept going and I mean, I'm studying alchemy for a long time. Like my, both my parents are history teachers and I studied ancient, ancient Egypt and the Emerald Tablet and everything I read in at such a young age, but I still brought it into my life as an adult. So, right. um, and then learning about tinctures when I was growing mushrooms and then what a spajiri tincture was. And it just, Oh, it's so fascinating. It just, and you never stop learning. It's just, it, n- it doesn't stop. I have like at least, like literally, I don't know if you can see back here, but like mm-hmm. so many books and right. it just never, it never ends. And, and there's so much information out there, but I think those are the kind of information that really get people to understand themselves and how you can tap into nature and work with nature and for nature to really have a different experience as a human being on earth. Like truly. I love it. I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm the first guy in the room to be like, we're just wild animals. We just happen (laughs) to have a bigger frontal lobe. We are nature. We are right. All the things we hate about ourselves, they're natural. This is, these are our instincts, you know, it's a hundred percent on board with all that. But now my whole thing, and I don't talk about this too much, but like we're civilized right now we're civilized we're smart we're educated we're civilized we don't you know we're not animals anymore Mm -hmm. and yet the only time any of us are really ever that happy is when we're eating fucking sleeping (laughs) high right or just not thinking like a deer right like the deer that i almost hit uh on the way home tonight It wasn't thinking. It just said, I'm here. I want to go over there now. It ran across the street. I almost ran it over with my truck. (laughs) Right. And in the not thinking, that's where the happiness comes in. Right. Like nobody got really happy thinking all the time about everything. You don't think your way to happiness. So yeah, Yeah. that's uh, particularly one thing that I love about microdosing or even a museum dose is I'm not hallucinating, but right. I am just seeing everything differently. It is richer, more vibrant, more colorful. I, I'm already naturally tuned into people's energy, mm-hmm. but when I'm on a microdose day or a, a museum dose, I mean, I am really tuned in. You can walk yeah. in a room and I can, I can hypothesize and within three guesses tell you what just happened to you. Like, um, really tune into that stuff. So I, yeah. I love it for that reason. It does shut my brain off and it just like, I'm just a little more organic, a little more thinking less and feeling more and yeah, yes. it's good for me. Now, more my only sense. problem with, with ADHD and, and the microdosing is I can't do it every day. I got to take breaks. Right. And then I, you know, that day right before my microdose day. <laughs> That is not always a great day for me. Like, I mean, having ADHD is not the end of the world, but you struggle, right? Like you forget things, you interrupt people all the time, you do this, you do that, and and it it has ramifications. So yeah, that's about my only critique thus far. (laughs) I agree. 
Yes, I agree. I mean, um, I, you know, they call, you know, there's protocols, the stamets protocol, the Fatiman protocol for mm -hmm. microdosing. And there's, I know they've been studying all that, but I also believe in intuitive microdosing and just kind of go with, especially for women. I mean, following the moon, I do follow the moon cycle. Um, so when are the days when it's full moon, new moon and are in our bodies as well. So this whole and Michaela Delamico, she talks a lot about the intuitive parts of microdosing and understanding your body and your own needs at certain times. Um, and I think that's important as well. And yeah, I, I can't do it all the time. Um, taking breaks is really important. Connecting with myself without it. So I can actually integrate because integration is a big part of it as well. It doesn't have, you don't, it's not only integration for big doses. I don't believe, I think integration comes with micro and everything that you do oh, yeah. that you process through it. So I think the part of integration should also come with the breaks, the journaling, the ritual, like we said before, um, and really understanding why am I you know, because it changes your perception. I think that's what it is. So something that bothered you the day before today, you're, I don't, I'm not bothered by traffic, or I'm not bothered by this guy cutting me off. I say, bye, you know, just like whatever, whatever it is, or this people, I mean, in my line of work, I work with children with disabilities, they scream, they yell, they bite, they push, they, you know, it's just, and I need to be in support of them. So I need to be my center right. so that I can support them and help them with speech. So um, definitely need something to enjoy, like really see the big picture of it. And I think you just said something really important, which is take breaks, being aligned with your body, in tune with your own needs, and just really seek right. that understanding of and the powerful of the medicine even if it's subperceptual like we said yeah but so my thing is like when people say subperceptual you don't feel high you don't feel tingly you don't you're not hallucinating you're not seeing you know visuals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but for me i still perceive it because i it. am thinking more clearly i'm seeing more clearly i am more i'm less reactionary and more able to just take a step back sometimes and not mm -hmm. get caught up in all of it. So, I mean, I still perceive the improvements, um, which is great, but you know, I, I don't, it's not like I drank five mm -hmm. beers. It's not like yeah. I just, mm -hmm. you know, did a dab or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm yes. just feeling improved. Which... You're feeling improved. You're, yeah. you're, yeah, you stepped up and you, you're more elevated or you're yep. more, I think sometimes I don't feel anything actually. It happens to me sometimes that day. I just forgot that mm -hmm. I did anything. And then by the end of the day or even the next day, I was like, wow, that was a really good day mm -hmm. that I really, yep. I, I was working that like I finished that project or, well, I was really focused or I had a great morning. I, I was really connected. I was enjoying every single second of the day or in the moment it feels, I guess you're right. It feels subperceptual. The, the word subperceptual makes it seem like you actually don't perceive it, but it actually, there is um, like a small change of, it could be small or big. I mean, a perception. And sometimes I do very, very, very small doses on purpose. So I absolutely don't feel a change of perception but i do know that it's in my body that it the carbon of the mushroom is recognizing the carbon in me that there's ancestral healing going through it that there's thousands of parts of me that that are they felt it before and it's going to that receptor so it's more i don't want to say placebo effect because it takes away the the actual potency of the, the, the sacredness of, of the medicine. But I think it's still, um, even if it's like, I'm saying 50 milligrams where I'm saying even 25, like really, really small. I'm a very sensitive being. So like I said, I don't drink coffee. So, or, you know, um, I don't drink alcohol. I do not smoke weed. Um, so I'm like sober through life. <laughs> it's just like, you know, uh, feeling it all. And, um, 
this is the one thing that it just works for me. Like it works in yep. small amounts. And even when it's not, it still works because even in absence of it, I still feel the presence and I can still go into that, in that center. Even when I'm not taking it, I'm still connected through to the, right. the spirit of it, you know? I love that. Yeah. Uh, not too long ago. Um, I forget uh, maybe two weeks ago, like it was a, the afternoon and my wife was, I, I don't even remember what I was doing. Something with my kids being goofy. And my wife was like, boy, you're in a good mood today. And I was, <laughs> and she's like, what's different? What'd you do? It's like, I don't know. I don't know. And then uh, later that night I went downstairs, I was working on sterilizers and uh, I walked by where I set my uh, capsule, you know, machine at. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I know what was different. I had just made a new batch of microdoses and it was with a different strain. Oh, and geez. that strain must have been muy bueno because bueno. it, it worked. And I was I like, love that's, that. that's what it was. So, yeah, I mean... I'm not high. Right? I don't feel the 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 magic mushrooms of it, right? But someone else perceived I was in it. I didn't have time to be like I'm feeling better. Right. I was just being me. And yep. my wife's like, "Dang, you were in a good mood today. What's up?" And then I <laughs> later finally put two and two together. You know, uh, I'm not gonna say yeah. what cultigen it is because I don't want to mm -hmm. like have 90 people go try to grow that and not have the same experience. But yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that you even mentioned that because it happens to me all the time Right. when I'm, I'm working with it. I'm just in it. I just mm -hmm. feel it and I'm smiling and I'm singing my songs and I'm yeah. dancing and yeah, it, it works. Like there's something, there's something so powerful about it and it doesn't have to be um, big or like right. it's just a presence it's a presence mm -hmm. yeah yep i'm with you um so let's do this be before we go here i do want to pull up your website um i think it's cool just so people can take a quick look at it okay let me do this here okay all right let me pull the overlay off okay so here we are uh alchemia is that how you say it Alchemia. Alchemia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Become the alchemist of your life. Transform, transmute, transcend. I love it. Okay. Here's how to get a hold of Tira Mycology. We got the about section. Here we go. Now, what's the origin of this logo here? I dig it. It's cool. Thank you. That's a really great art artist, Chelsea. My friend Chelsea, she's an amazing artist. And yeah, there's the components of alchemy. The three elements of alchemy oh, okay. is mercury, salt, and sulfur. Um, so soul, spirit, and body. So that's mm. like the three main elements of alchemy. And then the eye that sees it all and has the sun and the moon. So the yin and the yang. Okay. Um, and it's kind of like a third eye intuition thing. She just kind of read my mind of who I am, what I do. I, I just it. told her, I told her I love alchemy and the great work. Um, and that's what it was. Nice. All right. And then we got some, oh yeah. Okay. So here's stages of alchemy. So, all right, guys, if you're interested, if you want to connect on a deeper level, check out the website, uh, alchemia ritual.com. It'll be in the uh, link, uh, you know, in the description below as well. So you guys will be able to find it. Cool. Well, I tell you what, when you get back to Argentina and you get your lab set up, we're going to have to have you on. We're going to have to, you know, get you hyped up so you can start doing all the cool stuff you're going to do in Argentina. Um, I think there are so many countries that have not really been exposed to this. They know about it, right? But for whatever mm -hmm. reason, they're, they're, they, it's not available the the knowledge is not there so yeah. can't wait to hear about that journey what that's going to be like and uh for sure when cool stuff's happening let me know we'll have you on we'll talk about it it'll be fun oh thank you so much i really appreciate your time and of course i want to be I'll, I'll tell you all about it all my journey <laughs> when i get back home i'm hoping nothing but the best thank you so much Love for it. taking the time and getting to know me
Oh, my pleasure. All right, guys. Uh, so I'm going to say goodbye to Tierra Mycology. If you guys want to get at her, uh, links are all in the description below. Um, until next time. Uh, so when are you leaving for Argentina? Like how long or how long do you got here in the States yet? Um, I will say a couple more months. Oh, okay. A couple more months. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure everything out. So it's a process. Yeah. It's a process. It's a process, but I'm, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. All right. But well, I can also come back anytime because yes, I can come back anytime. So I'm not closing I, the doors to this place because this yeah. place has given me so much, yeah. so much appreciation for being here and all the knowledge I gained in all this past 10 years that I've been here. Love so it. I've been 10 years here and I feel like I've come full circle now, but I can always come back and it'll be there. Uh, yep. Yeah. And come back. You, That's you what I had to tell my wife when we left LA. I said, look, if we go to Ohio and we hate it, we can go back. It's all good. It'll be there. Yep. <laughs> yes, that's true. Cool. That's true. All right. Well, good luck. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. All right, guys. That was T. Aramycology, soon to be of Argentina again. Um, stay tuned. Uh, excited to see what she's going to do down there. Um, man, she kind of reminds me of my friend Martha, who's just killing it down in Colombia. She's doing so much education. She's teaching so many people across the globe how to grow mushrooms. Uh, very cool stuff. Soon we're going to have TR Mycology doing the same thing. This is it. This is spreading the spores, guys. This is the, you know, playing the role of educator, empowering people, getting people excited about this, exposing people to the way mushrooms has transformed your life so that maybe they can go, oh, maybe I should give that a try. Sounds cool. So, you know, that's that's really all I'm, all I'm about. I'm just trying to get people exposed to it. I'm trying to connect those of us who are doing this down in, our, in their basements by themselves all the time. All I got to play with are these little two microscopes here. You know, that's Ed. I, yes, named after Ed Grand. I, that's my new microscope. I named him Ed. And then this is my old microscope. I, I named her Martha after my Martha tent. Yes. Anyway, great. Great to have you guys back. Great to do this yet again. Stay tuned next week. We we got a we got a fun little guest for you guys. Uh, until then, go grow some mushrooms. Mm -hmm.